So I'll, I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. I am I'm definitely a visitor at this meeting, um, and I do not get an opportunity to vote, but I, I do want some, some thoughts to be recorded on the record. Um, I respect the council. I respect the council's opinions. Um, what we see today is going to be democracy. Uh, I put my life on the line for that, uh, so I um, yeah, will not be a hypocrite towards it at all. I want to see it in its truest form. Uh, what this makes me think about, though, is growing up in the Cedar Grove neighborhood, which has been talked about quite a bit today, um, and having to go over two or three seats, two or three streets to play curb. I don't know if you all are familiar with the game curb, but you throw a ball and it hits the curb and it bounces back. But I had to go over two or three streets because the street that I grew up on didn't have a curb or sidewalks or that infrastructure. So I've lived the story that we've heard today about the neglect in these neighborhoods. Um, I don't have to like drive by it to see it. Uh, it's been a lived experience. Uh, I was blessed enough to go off to West Point and go off and, and fight for the country to see the world, went to Harvard Law School. Uh, and what alarmed me in seeing all that was that I felt that the world was passing Shreveport by. Whether you talk about infrastructure, you talk about technology, uh, I, I genuinely felt that the world was passing Shreveport by, and that was one of the reasons why I decided to come back and run for mayor of this city. Now, in getting in the seat of mayor, I can tell you that this seat is extremely heavy, and what I thought was a problem, our problems are even greater. That's the scary part. The good news is we have the potential to climb out of this. That's the good news. But the scary part is our problems are even greater than what I thought I saw from the outside. So I'll talk a little bit about the process today because we've had some, some citizens comment on the process. Well, we emailed the council in May about putting together a citizens bond committee where each council member selected two people from their district that would represent their interests. I even had two, uh, two committee members as well. And at this point, I want to thank those very hardworking citizens who are extremely passionate about what they put on the, to the bond proposal. The citizens first met in June. Um, our city always operationally has a running list of the needs that we have. Always. It's always prepared. Now, might we have to go and inspect our streets to verify that that street is still in the condition that the computer system and software tells us? Yeah. And it'll take some time. But we always have a running list in every department of the need. So it doesn't take as much time to present as department heads to present our issues to the citizens. These citizens diligently did their work and they presented us their final proposal in July, at the end of July. So what we've seen from that particular proposal, and this is the part where I come out of the process and just talk about some things that have gone on. And I will not mention council members' names, but we talk a lot. And I've spoken to just about every council member about this. What you see today is a combination of the council members that were willing to work with me to get this bond proposal to our citizens. So yeah, the bond has come down from the initial 220 million that we proposed. Yes, some things have been moved around, but I assure you those things happened because the councilmen that were supporting this, that wanted to support this, we're working with me in good faith to present it to our citizens so I can fight to give them the opportunity to vote on this. And also, we, we hear that, you know, oh, this could be earmarked for this but spent on this. Well, the council controls the purse. So there is not going to be anybody from my administration, including me, that's going to go out and pull a million dollars and put it here and pull a million dollars and put it here. That doesn't happen. That's conspiratorial. It's not going to happen that way. This bond, just to conclude, this bond will address the immediate needs that I saw when I came into office that we feel every day on our roads, that we feel every day when public safety in our city seems to be going out the window, this bond addresses those immediate needs. And I pray to God that the people of Shreveport see that and they support it. Thank you.